Amazing. How are you? So I'm getting ready for my event in Las Vegas. Snoop Dogg, Kelly Clarkson, Justin Bieber, Andrew Day uh, tomorrow, MGM Grand Arena. What's up? Listen, man, I'm I I'm just excited to be to be on your platform right now, man. Just to have you on here. You wanted to interview me. Oh, hold on one second, Shay. Hold on. I'm interviewing him. Okay, you know I'm I messed up. My fault. I'm interviewing you. I thought you wanted to interview me, but I'm interviewing you. Yeah. So this. Yeah. I messed up. So let me let me let me reintroduce this guy right here. Um for everybody who doesn't know who this is, this is Shaquille O'Neal. Um the one of the greatest, to me, the greatest big man to ever play in the NBA. Let's just get that out of the way. Um so Shaq, just to just to start this off, we I, I wanted to have you on here, man, because you you have been an incredible just you know mentor to anybody who you don't even know you're mentoring but just everything that you do right now is is incredible and the relationship that we have is absolutely amazing man but it was it, it was just a few things that i wanted to talk to you about because i i read a few things on you and um i wanted to talk to you first about just um, fatherhood, because I, I read a few things of how you say, you know, your father wasn't in your life when you were coming up. Um, how did you deal with that, you know, growing into the young man that you you were growing into and then the adulthood? How did you deal with that? Well, my biological wasn't around, but my stepfather, I don't use the term stepfather, my father, because he, he showed up. Yeah. I mean, that had a kid, showed up, raised the kid to be successful. So, you know, I, I don't have fatherhood issues. My father was always there. Uh, I have a, a, de a, a, a developer relationship uh, now with my biological father. But listen, when you grow up with a drill sergeant, you don't have time to feel pain. You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. Right. So, you know, my, I was taught to focus on a dream and be the best at that dream. So for me, it was basketball, of course, and education. So, you know, I didn't have time to cry and, oh, my daddy's not here. You know, when you're a military guy, and uh, I shout out to all the military people and law enforcement, people, law enforcement people, when you have that type of training, when you have that type of mentality, nothing can phase you. So uh, at the end, when my stepfather passed away, I was mature enough to go to my biological father and say, it's okay. Because one thing I didn't want to do was be a hypocrite. Yeah. Things happen. Uh, you know, it's not like he left because he wanted to leave. He was just going through some things. And, you know, he wasn't there. But I just went up to him and said, I don't care about all that. I love you. I respect you. And thank you for bringing me in this world. So, you know, sometimes you have to learn how to forgive and forget. So even if somebody has done something bad to me or whatever, I'm old enough and mature enough now to, you know, forgive and forget. And that, that's that's absolutely amazing. And, and you brought up, um, that's amazing in itself, you brought up education. Because I read something about um, when you were, you know, playing with the Lakers and you went back to finish your education in college. And you had said, um, you know, when basketball is done, you'll probably have to get, you know, regular nine to five and all that. And you missed the game to for for um your graduation, right? If if I'm not wrong on that. Yeah, education is something very important. Uh, it's an alarming stat that says sixty five to seventy percent of all athletes when they're done have nothing. Uh, my father drilled that in my face, in my mind. I didn't want to be part of that stat. And you know, when it comes to family, I see my mother and father work so hard and just struggle. Yeah. I, one that was chosen to get the family out of that. So it's, you know, something I had to respect, something I had to believe in, something I had to say, okay, I want this to last forever. I don't want to just do this for, you know, because the NBA lifespan is five to seven years. I don't want to go five to seven years and then we go white right back where we were. So, you know, Magic Johnson told me at the age of 18, it's okay to be famous, but at some, part, some point you want to start owning things. So, I really focus on that, and 
I'm able to, you know, provide a good life and, you know, also, you know, provide the blueprint for other people uh, that grew up in some similar situation, the blueprint for my kids to follow. Actually, not my kids, everybody kids to follow. And I yeah. Always, I always tell people I wasn't the sharpest, sharpest knife in the tool, but if I could, you know, persevere and overcome and do it, you can do it too. And I always, you know, I'm an open book. I always give people my, 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 strategy, my, my strategy, my plan, and I, I want them to follow because everybody should eat. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, it's, and man, it's, it's incredible just to um, have you here and talking about that, man. Just education, because education is real. We, we all need it. Um, yeah, just but with everything that you... Let me, let me, let me clarify education. Yes, sir. Some people think education is going to school and getting a degree. No, education is learning something that you have no knowledge of. So, like, I learn something every day. Like, yeah. Me and how I handle my finances, I really didn't learn that in school. They taught me the basics, but just by having conversations with people, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos and, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, oh, just having a conversation, how'd you do it? Because, you know, my thing is, as a little kid, you always want to know how somebody did it. Excuse me, sir, how'd you do it? They show you, get it, study it. Master it, memorize it, add your own little flavors and sauces to it. It's that easy. And so, I because I, I I read too your love of law enforcement. What brought the love of law enforcement? You know, what what made you love that? What made you want to go into that? This man right here, that's my uncle Mike. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> what's going on, man? Back, so when I was young, I stole some bubble gum. And they called the cops, and Uncle Mike just happened to be on patrol that day, and put them put put them things on me. And... <laughs> what kind of bubble gum was it though? Was it worth it? You know the kind that costs one cent. So like I paid, <laughs> and I took like fifty, and then you know, and the guy called the cops, and Uncle Mike was there. Say, hey man, you lucky it was me. So he picked me up, and he said, you know what? Even though you're my nephew, I'm gonna show you what happened. You know when you break the law, I had to go sit in the jail day and after that you know you had the conversation uh if you continue this life if you continue to be a follower instead of a leader this is what you're going you went out a little bit Shaq. i'll just so I... your your phone is going out a little bit can you hear me The sound went out a little bit. Hello? No, it's, it's going out. The sound is out. Fix your yeah. phone. All right, cool. Cheap ass phone you got. <laughs> no, that's that's the place you in that Wi Fi cheap. You on that cricket. Fuck where I'm at. Yeah, that's, you're on that cricket Wi-Fi right now, bro. Uh, hey, uh, one last question because I got to roll. I, I got to go meet Snoop. Okay. No, one last question. Um, So I know your son is, is playing at LSU, right? Yeah. With the fatherhood, you know, being him, being there for him in the heart surgery, how did that affect you and, and everything that was going on? I mean, I had to be the, the, the strong one, you know. I was raised to worry about the solution, not the problem. So we found about the problem. So I'm on the horn. We got a solution. We got the doctor out of Stanford who's a thousand percent successful with the surgery. So I'm I'm cool from that point. And now yeah. I'm, just, I'm just telling my son, like, hey man, life is all about peaks and valleys. You know, I know you're on the top of your game in high school, and but now you just got so you know it's it's, it's just all about hard work. And yeah. You know, I always tell them that pressure is when you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Like people say, oh, it's hard to follow in your footsteps. He don't need to follow my footsteps. He need to create his own footsteps. Because they yeah. tell me the same thing. Oh, you you, you ain't going to be like Kareem or Will. I don't want to be like them. I want to be like Shaq. All right? Exactly. And you did that, man. Hey, listen, I'm glad that you came through, man. I appreciate it, man. And, hey, listen, whenever you – Whenever you do the 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 Shaq comedy tour again, man, hit me up. Super Bowl. Listen, listen. call me. I know. Listen, if I call you, you better be ready. I'm always ready, Shaq. 
I got you, boy. Love you. I got to go. People. Love up. you too, man. Always. Yes, sir. All right. Hey. You always got to be ready. And that's what we are. We always ready. I appreciate y'all, man. We here. It's season two. This is how we start off. We ain't got nothing else to do. Growing up winders, we here. Always ready. I appreciate y'all for showing up. I love y'all. It's Ian Winders, Growing Up Winders, the People's Comedian. We out. <laughs>